Hey guys, Jerry Mitchell like here. We're going to talk about revolvers and hunting revolvers and my experience with what you see on the table here. So hang on, let's take a look. Come on up close. Let's look at some guns here. 357 Magnum when it came out, guys were using it on big game. 44 Magnum, of course, came out in the 60s. Elma Keith was the driver behind the 44 Mag, 454 uh, Casul, all that came out in about the 70s. And the race for big really started happening with Smith & Wesson about 15, 18 years ago when they came out with the X-Frame revolvers, which is the 460s and the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum. So I, I put revolvers in a couple of categories. One would be a primary hunting gun that I would have in my hands the whole time. And the other one would be a handgun that I could actually put in a holster and feel comfortable carrying. So the weight to horsepower ratio is what I think about when I think about hunting handguns. So especially revolvers. So if you come here and take a look, uh, 357 Magnum Model 66s. The new 66s guys are super strong. You can put the heaviest 357 Magnum loads in it's a k frame it's relatively compact and i got a little cheat sheet here this thing weighs 36.9 ounce which is like two and 2.3 pounds so relatively compact 357 magnum i have it quad reported and what else i did this is something i want to show you as you get older if i had this on my hip and i say i'm i'm uh i have to shoot relatively quick and bad lighting conditions i'm 70 years old so if i don't have time to put my shooting correction lens in these high vis sights i can still make a relatively good shot with my regular prescription glasses out to about 30 40 yards should i need to and if you see what i'm looking at here that feature alone makes it a really compact high performance uh hunting backup gun i call this a backup gun maybe not a primary and this is another one. This is a uh, in frame 357 Magnum I was playing with, titanium cylinder. And what's really surprising about this combination, I was able to shoot through five feet of ballistic gelatin with a 180 grain cast bullet. So a lot of penetration, 357 Magnum. A lot of guys think it's not up to par, but five feet of penetration might change your mind on that. This gun weighs two and three quarter pounds, as you see it with the optic. So it's still something you can put into a holster. Uh, this is a holster I've been carrying. I brought it hunting last year. Didn't have, didn't have a chance to use it on what I wanted. And I passed up a few shots. But anyway, you can put it in a holster. It's still what I call a carry gun uh, for a hunting gun. And then going down the line. And this is one. This came out years ago. It's an all scanium titanium Smith & Wesson end frame. 357 Magnum H shot. And the beauty, the beauty of this thing, empty, it weighs a pound and three quarters. So it's the ultimate lightweight, high capacity, 357 Magnum. And what you want to see, what you want to realize, all these guns that you see on the table, they're drilled and tapped for optics. You can put a red dot or a scope on it, whatever you want. So all the modern guns have that feature, they're drilled and tapped. And coming up this way, we have a Model 69. It's an L-frame. It's all stainless. It's a very durable 44 mag five shot revolver. If you look at it compared to a K frame, which is a very carryable, carryable, is that a word? Easy to carry revolver. If you look at the size comparison, an L frame is just a little step up, extremely durable. And what they did, a lot of folks don't realize the enhancements they did on the 69 to make it compatible with the 44 mag is a totally different yoke assembly in it and they were able to pull a put a really full size barrel extension into the frame and that's where the small guns always lacked with the durability of that barrel coming into the forcing cone close to the cylinder the old k frames were very fragile there had a tendency to crack so when they redesigned the frame yoke cylinder and barrel the smaller guns now are extremely durable just the same as you would an end frame. So the model six, I took a, matter of fact, I took a spike with this a couple of years ago and it worked out really good. So that's 44 and going into the end frame, model six, uh, 629. This is one I've had for quite some time. It's a DX model. So what Smith and Weston did back in the day, they targeted their model 69s and the ones that shot an inch and a half and 50 yards 
from Marky DX, and this is one of them. I've actually shot mm, some really amazing groups at 100 yards with this one. And probably, well, let's talk about the weight a little bit. Uh, three pounds, as you see it, with, with an optic. So, very controllable. It's still something you can put into a holster and carry on your belt should you want to. It's right at that right at that breakover point that I would consider a backup or something you can actually put in a holster. And probably the ultimate horsepower to weight ratio revolver ever made is the 329. All scanium, titanium. Uh, this is a beast. It weighs 1.6 pounds, guys. 44 mag. I put the X frame grips on it. Really helps out with the recoil. They have a little sorbitane filler in the back. Uh, there again, the high vis sights. I look at this gun as something you can put into a holster. And this is when you uh, when you pull this, things are really going bad. <laughs> so I want to see as much as I can. And the high vis sights allow me to shoot it well without corrective lens at close range. So 44 mag, pound and three quarter. What can you say, guys? This is the uh, ultimate horsepower to weight ratio. So when you get into the X frames, the 460s and the 500s, they get to be heavy really quick. So I call that a primary gun, something I would carry in my hands all the time and hardly ever put it into a holster unless you had a big shoulder holster. Uh, X frame, four inch, 500 Magnum. Uh, what can I say, guys? This, uh, if you look at the ballistics on it, it's basically the same ballistics out of this four inch as you would have out of a three and a half inch magnum 12 gauge slug and it's all in your hand probably four times the energy of a 44 mag uh when you look at the ammunition you can go up to a 500 there's even 700 grain loads available for it it's just everything you could want to do with the revolver in a small package a lot of horsepower uh a few years back i took a lot of alligators with it i had a good friend of mine had tags we got 23 alligators in three days, and the 500 uh, kind of solved that problem really quick. Another X-Frame 500 Magnum. This is a full-size gun. Now, these guns are getting heavy. So this gun weighs uh, one and a half pounds. And you say, well, that's a lot, a lot of weight. And it is, but you sure do appreciate the weight if you're shooting a 500-grain bullet at 15, 1,700 feet a second. So accurate. Uh, you can get scope mounts, of course, put it right on the frame. This one has a red dot on it. Uh, it solves just about any problem that I can imagine. It's uh, probably what I think the best uh, X-Frame revolver for its usability and flexibility is the 460. And this is a performance center gun. And it has a 10-inch barrel. And that really takes uh, advantage of the cartridge itself. One of these primary loads for this is a 200 flex tip at 2200 feet a second. But you can also shoot, just, you can shoot 40, 45 Colt, 454 pistols in it. The cartridge itself shoots extremely flat. I had taken a barrel hog, I think, at 260 yards with this revolver. Uh, one shot, he didn't like it at all. It's a very flexible cartridge, extremely powerful, flat shooting. If I wanted to have one handgun to hunt with and, uh, yeah, have a primary, what I call primary, it would be this also has a sling swivel in the front give you an idea how heavy it is it weighs six pounds <laughs> well and you really appreciate your weight when you shoot it so there you have it guys just a brief overlook on revolvers and hunting calibers kind of get an idea of what we have here uh this is a heavy loaded 38 special with a 230 grain bullet uh standard 158 357 magnum a 300 grain Hornady XTP, a 460 with a 200 grain bullet, and a Smith and Wesson 500 Magnum with a 500 grain Hornady round. So, if bigger is better, of course, the 500 beats them all, but uh, you got you got that, you got <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of gun. Anyway, 460, I think, would be the fit. 44 Mag solves a lot of problems. Father Law told me when 44 came out, Jim Clark. I uh, started hunting in Texas, you know, shooting deer. He shot 16 deer, 16 shots. And uh, like I say, he was a better shooter than I. But let's go out on the range and shoot some groups with these different revolvers and show you the striking energy uh, compared to one another.
All right, I got my trusty test medium down there. It's about a seven pound can of white hominy. Uh, I've got a 460. This is the Hornady 200 grain FTX round. It claimed 2200 and the probably out of that 10 inch barrel is coming really close. Probably the best choice of choice of a bullet for thin skin game. I've seen it work on deer and hogs. And uh, I want to show you the hydrostatic shock effect of a high velocity bullet out of a handgun. And uh, let's go ahead and shoot that pan and see what that looks like. All right, here we go. I got some, brother. <laughs> Woo! Let me clear this thing out. All right, we're clear, empty chamber. So, great things start happening at that velocity. <laughs> you can see we're about, what, 15 yards from it? We've got pieces of uh, hominy all the way back to the wall here. Let's go forward. This is what I want to show you. Uh, what hydrostatic shock means. You can see by the 2x4, it broke that 2x4. <clears throat> you can see the can itself. That's how much hydraulic shock effect it has when it impacts at close range. And you can tell by the dispersion here, we've got it all the way on that berm, white hominy, and we got it all the way back this way. If it comes down this way, <laughs> you can see the can didn't like it at all. We've got pieces of the, let's see how far it went. We got some over here. We got some over here, over here. Uh, we got some over here. <laughs> well, if you look. <laughs> Look back this way, guys. We're about 20, 28 yards from point of impact, and there's still some white um, there. That's a that's what happens with high velocity and the right bullet. Uh, let's shoot a 44. Okay, guys, we got a 44 mag, six and a half inch, 629 DX, and what I have for ammunition, of course, a Hornady round, 225 uh, flex tip. I had a chance to take a big spike with that four inch revolver a couple of years ago it did a really good job it didn't go for about maybe 30 yards so what you want to realize that 460 was doing 2200 and this is a little bit heavier bullet but it's doing 1400 so a good 600 feet a second difference or 800 feet a second difference so we're going to try it out same test medium and uh let's see what happens here we go I gotta laugh, guys. This is cool. All right, we're empty. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look. You know, I'm uh, I'm really impressed with what I just saw right here. The uh, of course the can didn't fly apart nearly as much. But it still had a lot of hydraulic effect. It still broke the two by four. So that flex tip bullet managed to open up pretty good inside that can and dissipate a lot of energy. So I know what you're thinking. 357. Let's try it. Okay, guys, we're down to the 357 Magnum, which was a benchmark. Let's start that over. Hey guys, we're down to the 357 Magnum. This is a 158 grain Hornady XTP to reload, max velocity, six and a half inch revolver. Back in the day, this was considered really good for game like deer. So let's go ahead and shoot our uh, target of opportunity here and compare it to the other two cartridges. And uh, let's see what we can do. All right. It 
kind of <laughs> kind of hard to compare a 357 without the shooting 460. Let's go take a look. Well, I didn't break a two by four, <laughs> but. Uh, the can didn't like it. The hit was solid. Uh, just uh, not a bunch of hydrostatic. It has taken a lot of deer, though. So it was a can of deer or the can or the dough. Uh, anyway, so there you have it, guys. Let's go back and take a look at the other cans. While we're looking at these cans, I want to kind of discuss with you handgun hunting in general. But you have to realize most stands and most shooting conditions that when you actually hunt is relatively hard. I'm on a perfect rest here. I got sandbags. I know I got all the time in the world. So when you train to handgun hunt, try to simulate the conditions that you are going to encounter and see how well you can group that particular gun at the distance that you want to engage your game animal. This is just kind of a rough comparison of velocity, bullet choice. Kind of give you an idea of the 460, of course, velocity is always your friend. It's a brute of a gun. Uh, as you can see, it had a lot of terminal effect on that can. This 44 Magnum also achieved better than what I thought it was going to do. 357 Magnum, uh, this was the exit hole. So the XTP is designed for a control expansion and deep penetration. So it, it did that. The energy transfer was uh, about what I expected out of it. And also what you want to remember back in the day, most deer were almost totally wiped out in the United States by 3840. Uh, lever guns, 4440 lever guns, uh, they're all black powder cartridges which achieved very little velocity over 1300 feet a second. So the modern cartridges are a lot more efficient, the bullet designs are a lot more efficient. So choose wisely, but choose wisely, but also practice at the distance and in the shooting conditions that you might encounter in the field, and uh, you'll have a good day. Get some.